the topic for this lecture is mucus membrane pemphigoid and we'll start with the introduction mucus membrane pemphigoid also known as ocular psychotracheal pemphigoid comprises a group of chronic autoimmune mucocutaneous blistering diseases an unknown trigger leads to a type 2 cytotoxic hypersensitivity response resulting in antibodies binding at the basement membrane zone the activation of complement and the recruitment of inflammatory cells with localized separation of epidermis from the dermis at the basement membrane zone and subsequent progression to scarring. Studies of HLA typing have found an increased susceptibility to the disease in patients with HLA DR4. The, the HLA DQB1 allele in particular shows a strong association with OCP and other forms of pentagoid disease. A wide range of epithelial tissues can be involved, including the skin and various mucous membranes. Particular clinical forms of mucous membrane pamphigoid tend to involve specific target tissues. Bullis pamphigoid shows a predilection for skin and ocular mucous membrane. Uh, pamphigoid, also known as ocular psychotracial pamphigoid, OCP, involving the conjunctiva in the majority of cases and causing progressive scarring, also psychotrization. The disease typically presents in old age and affects females more commonly than males by a ratio of 2 to 1. Other causes of psychotrizing conjunctivitis include Stevens-Johnson syndrome, trachoma, drug-induced trauma, and severe or chronic conjunctivitis of many types. Mucous membrane pemphigoid should not be confused with pemphigus, a distinct group of disorders. Diagnosis is principally clinical, but biopsy of involved mucous membrane often shows supportive changes like linear antibody and complement basement membrane zone deposition. Progression has been divided into stages. Uh, it's called Foster's classification system. Stage 1 early is the early stage and it is associated with chronic conjunctivitis, tear dysfunction and subepithelial fibrosis. Stage 2 is for nasal shortening, particularly inferiorly. Stage 3 is simbleferone formation and stage 4 is surface keratinization and psychotracial ankyloblepharone. Symptoms are insidious or relapse remitting non-specific bilateral conjunctivitis. Misdiagnosed, for example, dry eyes uh, is common. We will uh, discuss each of the ocular features uh, in conjunctiva. Papillary conjunctivitis, diffuse hyperemia, edema, and subtle fibrosis is common. Fine lines of subconjunctival fibrosis and shortening of inferior furnaces. Uh, Simbleferone formation, which refers to adhesion between the bulbar and the fibril conjunctiva, is common at, as it is seen in the picture. You can see the simbleferone formation here and fibrosis of the conjunctiva with shortening of cornices, especially the inferior one. There is necrosis in severe cases, flattening of the plica and keratinization of the caruncle. Dry eyes are due to destruction of the goblet cells and accessory lacrimal glands, diffusion of the main lacrimal ductules. Monitoring should include the measurement of corniceal depth and noting the position of adhesions. Changes in the eyelids include aberrant lashes, tracheatic, chronic blepharitis and keratinization of the lid margin and chyloblepharon is an adhesion at the outer canthus between the upper and the lower lid as you can see here
ocular features in cornea are also very debilitating. We can see epithelial defects which are associated with drying and exposure as which is seen in the first picture. There is central epithelial defect here. There is infiltration and peripheral vascularization as it is seen in the second picture. You can see peripheral vascularization coming in from all the directions. And then is the keratinization and conjunctivalization of the corneal surface due to epithelial stem cell failure. Here we can see keratinization of the surface and conjunctiva is infiltrating the corneal surface. And stage disease is characterized by total stem, uh, sorry, simblepharon and corneal precipitation. Uh, cornea is definitely opaque here, although we cannot uh, see the simblepharon formation. Now, systemic uh, features include mucosal involvement and skin lesions. Mucosal involvement is very common and is characterized by sub-epidermal blisters, most frequently orals. Uh, severe manifestations include uh, esophageal and laryngeal strictures. Skin lesions are less common uh, in 25% and present as tense blisters and erosions of the head, neck, groin and extremities. In this picture, we can see blisters in the extremities. Systemic treatment is the mainstay of management. Any detectable inflammatory activity should be suppressed. Uh, Depson uh, is a useful first-line treatment in patients with mild to moderate disease. Approximately 70% of patients respond favorably. It is contraindicated in G6P uh, dehydrogenase deficiency. Sulfasalazine is sometimes better tolerated. Antimetabolites, for example, azathioprine, methotrexate, mycophenolate, namofetil are alternatives for mild to moderate disease if Tepson is contraindicated, ineffective or poorly tolerated, and are suitable for long-term therapy. Depson can be used in conjunction if necessary. Cyclophosphamide may be reserved for severe or refractory disease. Then comes steroids, uh, prednisolone 1 to 1.5 mg per kilogram are effective for rapid disease control but adverse effects limit long term use. Uh, IOP should be monitored. Other measures include intravenous immunoglobulin therapy and rituximab. Remission has been reported with a combination regimen. Now local treatment. Uh, it includes artificial tears and preferably uh, preservative free and they are integral part of most of the regimens. Topical steroids, cyclosporin and tecrolimus may be used as an adjunct to systemic immunosuppressive treatment. Retinoic acid may reduce keratinization. Antibiotics are used uh, when they are indicated and lead hygiene and low dose oral tetracycline are used for uh, blepharitis. Then there is a role of subconjunctival mitomycin C or steroid injection. It may be used as a temporizing aid or if systemic immunosuppression is not possible. Contact lenses may be used with caution to protect the cornea from aberrant lashes or, and from dehydration. After uh, local and systemic treatment, there is also role of surgery. Reconstructive surgery, preferably under systemic steroid cover, should be considered when active disease is controlled. Surgery for aberrant eyelashes can be done. Punctal occlusion to aid tear retention. Uh, and then lateral tarsography or botulinum toxin induced doses may be used to promote healing of corneal epithelial defects. Entropion repair, uh, that is conjunctival incision if avoided is possible. Cataract surgery is commonly required. Mucous membrane autografting or amniotic membrane transplantation for conjunctival resurfacing and corneal uh, 
Restoration Limbal stem cell transfer may be attempted for corneal reepithelialization. Keratoplasty carries a high risk of failure. Uh, lamellar grafts may be effective for uh, perforation. Keratoprosthesis may be the only option in the end stage disease, as it is seen in the picture here. This is keratoprosthesis. With this, we will conclude this lecture uh, on mucous membrane pathogoid and if you like the lecture, please press on the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.